Hello. Today, my talk is Data Envelopment Analysis on the Big Data. The main purpose of this talk is, a talk is to talk about how Data Envelopment Analysis, or DEA, um, should be used uh, on the uh, Big Data. I will introduce some uh, very basic concepts um, um, in DEA and show how DEA, um, as a tool that was proposed more than 40 years ago, have been evolving into um, something um, that's that's very different, and I will also talk about um, how uh, DEA uh, is linked with uh, big data. Now, if you do a, a quick search on Google, say use the term data science techniques or data science tools, uh, you will most likely, uh, you know, the first result page, you get a list of uh, different, you know, te techniques and like linear regression, logistic regression, so lots of regression techniques, and some other type of uh, method or techniques. Uh, you will not going to see, um, you know, DEA uh, in that list. However, this does not necessarily mean that DEA is not a tool uh, for uh, big data uh, analysis or even just for the sake of just uh, quality data science um, technique. So I will show how um, uh, DEA um, is um, linked with uh, a data science tool and I will also um, do a very brief um, literature review um, on the use of DEA as a um, productivity and a data science uh, technique. So let's talk about what is DEA. Um, if you've been working on DEA, uh, you probably know of DEA is just a ratio analysis. Or is it? What is it, right? Um, so some of the basics here uh, in DEA, uh, we have a set of DMUs or decision-making units. Um, these DMUs can be um, anything from um, bank branches uh, to uh, a set of um, university, um, you know, departments, um, retail stores, um, anything that um, you are evaluating, uh, you are interested in doing a benchmarking study or a production um, analysis, for example. And then we also have a set of measures. Um, I think this is the kind of the, the, the very basic thing in the DEA. You have to have two things. One is a set of uh, DMUs. Um, that's, you know, you're going to have it because you know, if you're going to study uh, benchmarking or performance evaluation, then a set of measures. Um, if you look at the DEA literature, um, you will always see inputs and outputs. Okay, the, uh, the inputs and outputs. Um, if you see that, you will immediately think that, oh, you know, you're looking at a production, right? Um, so I have input resources and, and go through a production process and then I get the outputs. However, this is not the case actually. Um, in DEA, uh, later on, I will talk about if it's used as, used as a benchmarking tool, uh, you basically group the measures into two groups, at least two groups. Um, there are uh, papers uh, that's published to deal with that um, you know, the measures that does not, you know, do not fit into these two groups. Uh, so basically what are the inputs? The input measures are usually uh, the smaller the better and the outputs are the larger the better. So now I usually um, in DEA use the symbol X for inputs and Y for outputs. However, we know that um, these are not, um, you know, decision variables as in a uh, mathematical model. These are observations. So you observe a set of DMUs and then you have a set of measures. So you have data over time or across, you know, different um, units. Um, so you try to figure out well, which units are the best practices, right? Um, so um, the inputs will be the smaller, the better, and the outputs will be the larger, the better. Um, but again, there are some other um, type of um, measures and you can uh, do a literature uh, search on the EA and you can see those papers. I will not go into uh, details with these types. So I just will focus on these two types, inputs and outputs. But just remember, uh, you know, inputs and outputs only make sense if you talk about the production technology. Okay. 
when you talk about to use the DEA as a benchmarking tool in general, um, the inputs are not the, the inputs you put into the process and, and then you turn into the outputs. It's just uh, a set of uh, uh, measures that you want the observations uh, to be the smaller um, the better. And when you read the uh, the, the, the DEA papers, you will see uh, what the DEA you know, estimates, uh, efficiency scores, identifies uh, best practices, um, in, in all these things. And some papers will say, you know, construct composite indexes. Uh, personally, I would prefer to call um, DEA as a user to um, construct a composite index. Um, so that composite index, a particular index, can be a risk index. Um, there are papers about uh, predicting or uh, bank failure. Um, there are papers in particular in healthcare areas that they use the DEA to build a quality index. That you, have, you have, when you have a bunch of uh, measures that um, uh, reflect the, the quality of the care, how do you uh, uh, integrate them to get a, a composite index? Um, so when you look at a, a mathematically, I mean, this is what you see, right? So you have um, this um, is the Y usually what I call the, the, the larger the better of the outputs. If you talk about the, um, the production technology, but again, um, it's like a standard terminology. You always call them outputs, but in the back of your mind, you should always think about this is not necessarily the real um, output. So you, you, you see, this is a ratio. It's it's a uh, uh, weighted um, you know, sum of all the outputs and with the sum weighted sum of all the inputs. So in here, uh, the x and the y are observations. They are known. Um, the things only are known are the uh, the weights u and, and v here. Okay, so this is the um, the ratio, right? This is the ratio. Um, so it is a ratio. Um, so the, now the question is, what does this ratio represent? This is a very key question um, when you want to use DEA. Uh, you, you end up with a score, right? The ratio score. Uh, what does this ratio or score represent? You have to answer that question. And based upon, because um, there are two things um, I think going, um, going on simultaneously. Uh, one is what this ratio uh, represent? But that depends on the measures that you use, right? What input measures you, you use, what output measures you use, um, that will lead to what this ratio represents. It sometimes may not have an econo specific economic meaning. It's just a, a composite index, which is, which is fine. You can say, you know, I want to um, define this composite index based upon um, this particular set of um, inputs and outputs which is, is totally fine. So this is a very key question um, you need to think about before you do uh, your research or you apply a DEA. So um, in my view, there's two lines of research in DEA. Uh, one is usually when you re read the papers, you will see sometimes we'll talk about production and efficiency estimation. And the other line is a, uh, it's a benchmark in general. So on the production, uh, and you will see a return to scale. You know, you talk about uh, the year model, it's a, um, you probably see a constant return to scale or variable return to scale. And then you have um, uh, the assumption of the convexity, okay? And then, of course, the choice of inputs and outputs, uh, it's very important because you're talking about production, you want to make sure the impact, uh, the inputs that you choose will have an impact on the outputs uh, in it. However, right, when you treat the DEA, um, as a uh, benchmarking tool, you just want to, to see, you know, um, you know, you have a set of uh, bank branches, so you want to see which ones are the uh, the best practices, right? Um, so again, you still have the, uh, the people still use the return to scale. However, in here, the return to scale may not necessarily be reflecting the, the economic definition of return to scale. It's just uh, the shape of the uh, best um, uh, practice. Frontier, because uh, when you have a set of uh, band branches or DMUs, you have observation. If we imagine you can plot this um, um, observations, and you you gonna and then you're gonna use a uh, you know a best practice kind of to to invent 
the, all the observations. So that's why it's called a data environment analysis. And so what, 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 what would be the, the, the shape, you know, uh, would be? So, um, and, and we have uh, papers on that, written on that. So I will not go into, again, into details in this talk. And hopefully this talk will give you um, some general ideas and some motivations so that you can go um, look for uh, these, um, uh, these articles. Now, the convexity assumption um, is not explicit in, in the original DEM model, in the original Charles Cook wrote that published in 1978. Um, you all, I will show you that uh, in, a, in, a, in a couple of uh, sli uh, slides. And also it's very flexible in, in choosing um, uh, the, the, the performance measures. Uh, one can have, uh, one can use actually racial measures. So I mean, if you, you've been uh, reading the DEA literature, so there are papers about, you know, you cannot use the racial measures um, in, um, in the DE analysis. Uh, you, you cannot use the racial measures when you do production or efficiency estimations. You have to use a, a, a different set of DE models for that. But for um, general, um, general benchmarking purposes, you, you definitely can use uh, uh, the racial measures. So that there, there are um, debates um, or disagreements in between uh, among the scholars in, in, in terms of how can you use um, racial measures as an input and output in DEA. So my answer, it depends. You know, it depends on what you want to do. And also, I want also to point out that um, so in, in the previous slides, I, uh, uh, I showed you the uh, is a, uh, a racial analysis. So you have the uh, the output, you know, divided by the the, the, the inputs in there. Uh, but you have situations there where you only have the the measures you want them to be the larger the better, or you have situations that you want to be the smaller the better. So in in this case, you will not have a ratio. But you still have uh, a, a, an index, a composite index. So this is um, what's the convention of the EA. Um, we we'll talk about the EA. I mean, you see a lot of a lot of videos um, when people talk, they talk about. Um, this is probably a typical uh, figure uh, that, that you can see. Right. Um, so you have set up the MUs. Right. And let's say um, these are bank branches, for example, and then you have the inputs and the output inputs, say um, the, your, um, uh, the, the number of tariffs, um, the salaries, um, you know, the, uh, the investment on the uh, information technology and like the ATM machines, for example, and now of course you would have the number of, the number of deposits, and transactions, and loans, and so on and so forth. And, and then you have these arrows kind of going in, indicating that these are the inputs going in, and then you have the outputs for, uh, you know, that's sort of traditional conversion of the EA. Um, uh, however, what is the exactly, right? And I have a slightly different view on what is a, a, a DEA. I think it's more than production efficiency estimation, right? Um, you know, I've been, you know, sometimes, you know, I've been involved in the, the and the editorial position in, in different um, journals. It, it sometimes you send out papers to reviewers and, and sometimes you see the review reports that um, are kind of um, interesting to me because um, I still remember at one time I, seen, I, I see a, um, a review report saying that, oh, you're talking about the production. How can you not use labor as an input? I mean, it, it is a, a very rational, uh, question, but when you have to uh, look at a specific problem, maybe you know labor is not of of interest, so you don't have to use labor as an input. I think the reviewer was reviewer was think was thinking about a production, right? a production function. How can you not have labor and capital? Um, in, in his or her mind, which is fine, but under the context of a specific application, you may not have that uh, in it. So it's not necessarily production. It's it's a um, a benchmarking tool, right? So, um, Professor David Sherman and I, we um, published in uh, 2013 in Slow Management Review. There's an article, if you're interested, and I would encourage you to, to read it, uh, to read it. 
um, have a look. Uh, we we um, kind of present DEA as a balanced benchmark. Right? It's, it's very well balanced because you have a set of measures that you want to be the smaller, the, 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 the better, and then you have another set of measures that you want to be not the larger, the better. So uh, we'll say, you know, it's, it's a benchmarking, but really it is a benchmarking tool. Um, so under that context, um, the measures that you choose are the ones that you're interested in um, benchmarking um, the, the units, the DMUs. Um, here's another example right, um, that we, uh, I wrote with Professor Wick Cook and Carl Tony. Um, in that paper, that paper was published, uh, it's published in, in Omega in 2014. Um, and we use an example, right? Um, so in, in, in this um, a, um, example, so you're uh, looking at, uh, say, your benchmarking performance of the computers. Right? So you have a, a screen size, resolution, memory size, you know, hard disk size, and anything else. Um, so because you want to use DEA, so you use, we use the standard terminology in DEA. We're still going to say, oh, these are the inputs, these are the outputs. However, as you can see here, um, you know, the features, these are the computer features may not represent, actually represent inputs at all, at all, right? Um, so if we have interest, go, go ahead and take a look at this, um, um, this um, paper. So let's um, revisit what a DEA. This is how I would present a DEA. Um, again, you still have a set of DMUs, right? Um, Instead of having the inputs and outputs, I, I will mark them as category one and category two, right? Um, so category one is a set of performance you know, metrics and then category two is another set of performance metrics. And I also get rid of the errors. So you can see it's just the lines. That means uh, these, you know, the measures are, that are associated with um, uh, this set of DMUs. Um, so the, um, you can have multiple um, inputs and multiple outputs in there. Um, again, the, the, the category one or the inputs are the smaller the better, and the, uh, the other side is the larger the better. And then um, this is the rule uh, for uh, class classifying the, um, these metrics. So before you start the application, right, you, this is what you need to do, you know, classify uh, these measures. Now, and again, as I showed you before, you may only have category one measures and you may only have uh, a set of category two measures, which is, is fine, which is you know, completely fine. You can do that. So this is how I would, how I would build uh, what is the uh, in terms of its, its basics. And again, here, the definition of uh, DMU is very generic. I mean, flexible can be anything, right? So um, here are some examples that um, in the literature now, I think it's more than 4,000 uh, published the papers in there. In there uh, you probably can get a, a list of the DMUs from A to Z, from Air Force to Z, zoos, you know, we'll look at uh, uh, these things. Um, and again, when you read papers, you know, uh, the papers you often see, you know, usually in the introduction, the very first two you know, sentences, you'll see the DEA is a methodology for you know, efficiency variation, something like that. Um, I would think that that's a very uh, generic term also. The efficiency sometimes is, 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 is just a standard term. Um, in DEA, it can refer to the, um, uh, the overall performance. Right. You just just you know the performance all can be the production efficiencies. So you have to to read the article to see what it's actually uh, refer, referring to in, in there. Um, so I think it's 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 a very very general. It's not specific to production uh, only. Okay. Um, I would just say you know um, uh, you know a composite index. You can you can um, say that too because you know DEA has a history over the you know, past you know, 40 years. So that's how um, the standard description of DEA uh, is there. But I think we need to know, at least know, uh, the, the efficiency score does not necessarily mean technical efficiency uh, uh, scores. 
So let's do, take a look at the very first DNA model. Right? Just uh, quickly look at it. So you have this, you know, uh, ratio um, in there. Um, the constraint here, because you want to maximize the ratio. Now, if you kind of inverse the ratio, then you're just going to minimize it. It doesn't, you know, mathematically speaking, it doesn't matter here, you have two greater than equal to one. You have to impose the less than equal to one, otherwise this ratio is going to just go to infinity and you're not, you're not going to get a solution. So here you actually don't have to say it has to be less than equal to one. You can say less than equal to two, you know, 100, you know, it, you know, it, it doesn't matter, right? Uh, because you're constrained it to be less than equal to one. So, you know, usually when you, you look at the, the paper, so when you get a score for one, so that's efficient on the, on the, on the uh, you know, best practice from T. And then this is uh, nonlinear, you can, you know, convert into this. This is usually called a multiply model. So this is called a weights in there, but here it's actually called a multiply because there is a transformation involved. Right? You want mathematically the equivalent, but yeah, I see still see papers calling these are weights, which is okay as long, as long as you know these are not the weights in the original model. Okay, there is a transformation going on there, and then of course you have the dual model in there on the left. So this is usually called the envelopment model. So again, all these models x, y are observations. Everything else are decision variables. For example, in, in here, the decision variables will be the theta, which is the the efficiency score. Or the composite index form, and then the, lab, the lambdas. So uh, let me you know leave this here for a while, just to kind of talk about. If you look at the model on your um, you know right in there, this this envelopment model. Um, there's a, a line of you know papers that actually talk about this type of model that can, can be developed from not necessarily from the dual duality in a, in, in LP. It can be developed from just using a set of of rules, um, so you get a uh, production possibility set, okay, and then you can get this model in there. There is a convexity assumption in there, but if you look at this original model, there is no assumption about that. The convexity. So once you have this, um, you know, linear, you know, multiply model, and then you, you look at the, the dual, and people say, "Oh, there is a convexity." Okay, convexity. The convexity, I think, is important in if you do uh, research and. Um, in economics in there, and uh, it's because of the convexity, uh, the use of ratio measures can be, you know, can be uh, a problem, can be a problem. Uh, however, in the original uh, ratio model, or even in the multiply model, there's no uh, uh, convexity assumptions in there. So I think that's why uh, you still can uh, use the, uh, the ratio uh, measures in, in the So uh, now um, let me talk about um, you know business analytics about data environment analysis. So what is oh, uh, the uh, there are a couple of things um, the uh, associated with. However, the last thing in here I kind of um, scratched it out. Um, uh, support you know human decisions with visual analytics. Um, this is not what the is designed to do. I think the is uh, was actually designed to do. The, all these three things, but not in the last thing, uh, at least for now, okay, at least for now. So you, you can gain insights from the historical data. Right? Um, you can actually use the year as a forecasting tool. Right? There are papers on that. Um, so the EA um, uses, um, uh, well, all we know is use linear programming you know, technique, but later I will show you it's not, you know, because of the development in the EA, uh, nonlinear uh, optimization techniques is also important uh, for, for DEA uh, also. So all these things that you can see all related to uh, DEA, it's, it's, it's a business and an analytics tool, DEA, okay. Um, data environment analysis, okay, so um, if you take out the environment, it's just the data analysis, right? DEA is actually data-based, it's uh, what I call data enabled. If there are no data, there's no DEA. The, 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 we put the environment in there is, is to reflect the, the best practice from here, right? Um, I mean, it is, you, you use DEA to do data mining, you discover knowledge in the data, right? It's, it's more than relative efficiency. Uh, 
uh, if you think about it. Uh, anyway, so that's why I, I want uh, after this, you know, um, this presentation, I hopefully that you can kind of have a a broad view and an open-minded view about um, the DEA. It's, it's not just about relative efficiency. Now, if, if you do production function, you know, kind of um, research in there, yeah, you, you get the relative efficiency, you get the production efficiency uh, um, scores. You still can get that, but you, you get more than that, okay? Let's remember DEA is a data analysis tool. Um, I want to briefly talk about the sample size. You know, this, and you, as I see, I see a lot of people talking about, you know, yes, suddenly you, that's not enough um, the DMUs. It's not enough um, inputs and outputs, for example. Um, I remember the year is not a form of regression model. Right? So it, I, I, in my view, it is meaningless to apply sample size. Now you can, you know, it's, you know nowadays it's a big data. You have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, information, uh, data that's available to, to you. So maybe sample size is not an issue. But again, if you look at the year as, as the technique, um, you should not apply sample size. Let's say if you only have uh, five um, you know, bank branches in a certain region and you want to do a benchmarking study and you telling me that, well, there's only five banks, that the sample size is too small, I cannot do it. Maybe you cannot do it, use a regression model, but in the DEA, you still can do it. Um, the other issue that I often uh, uh, hear is that or there's only five DMUs, and sometimes you may have too many inputs and outputs and end up with all five by efficient. Now there's two um, sides to it. Uh, one side is that, so what? what? What if all five are efficient? Maybe they are efficient, right? Maybe they are doing, doing a good job, so you, so you want them to be efficient. So that's not a problem. Um, the, the, other, the other side is maybe, you know, it is an issue you're using too many uh, inputs and outputs, so can you, you know, reduce the number of inputs and outputs and use some other DEA techniques um, to do that. Certainly you can. Um, so um, I think you, some people heard of the, 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 the rules of thumb, right? So the, the, the total number of DMUs had to be two times or three times, you know, um, as the, the total number of the inputs and outputs. And you can try that rule, but again, this is an empirical rule, right? There's no proof on that. So. Uh, if you're doing a benchmarking study, um, I think it's fine. If you if that rule is not satisfied, um, and we have papers uh, that accepted or published that, that, that actually uh, say that what if that rule does not satisfy? What would you do? In okay. So I just want to um, put the slide in there um, again. DEA is not a form of regression. Okay. So let's look at past 10 years, right? The past 10 years. Um, we, I, I did a, um, I did uh, research on that for the, just for the past 10 years. And when I look at these papers, uh, you can see uh, three major things. One is the use the year as a data-driven tool for um, descriptive analytics by gaining insights from the data. Okay, and the second thing is um, developing the year models for studying network structure. So I will talk about that more uh, later on. I think this is really the the future of the year, the the, the other research frontier of the of the year on the bigger data, and then of course combine the year with some other data analysis tools. Okay, so that's what's happening. The three major things over the past ten years. Um, so as you can see, the ES has already shifting from just the, the standard of, you know, evaluation tool uh, to look at, say, you know, uh, production efficiency, for example, and, and, and do uh, more things that related to um, data analysis. So here's one uh, paper that's published in, in the Omega. Um, so they, they use the ES tool and they combine it with artificial neural networks to um, you know, use them in um, organ um, transplants to improve the, the matching um, accuracy. Uh, and the, yeah, if you read the paper, I strongly uh, encourage you to read this paper, okay? Um, the, the use of just the basic DEM model 
uh, greatly improve the, the matching accuracy. This is very, very um, important. Okay, so it's, you, as you can see here, DEA is not using the main tool. The main tool is still a neural uh, network, but the DEA helps the accuracy of the neural network and also the, as a result to help increase the matching, uh, matching accuracy. Uh, in it. So uh, that, that is a very interesting um, study and, and I, when I go around and make my talks and often uh, cite this, uh, this, this work. And then there's uh, some other um, um, combined uses of DEA with other data analytics tools. Okay, um, this is um, one study. Okay, um, uh, so I just list the three studies. Um, these three studies uh, uh, is going to be uh, published in a, in a special issue of JAWS, the Journal of the Operational Research Society. Uh, that we are um, editing um, um, uh, the data science and you know and, and productivity analysis. Um, so I think it, uh, we are almost done with editing of this um, special issue, and these are the papers that um, accepted uh, in there. Um, and I believe you can uh, you know search for it under just on the drawers these names. You know, I, I, unfortunately, I don't have enough space to put down. The full citations of the um, of these three um, articles, but I'm sure you should be able to, um, you know, get them um, if you do a, the searches under uh, inside uh, this particular uh, the drawers um, journal. Um, and then um, some other. Uh, studies um, in the in the line of productivity and benchmarking. Okay, so I just uh, put these two, um, uh, you know, uh, papers in there. Um, and then the, the, this, uh, I didn't, you know, talk about you know, what's in there. So I actually put the full citations uh, in there. Again, um, you can um, you can read that if, if you have interest. In, please go ahead and you know, just have a quick read on that. Um, these two uh, papers I will not talk about in details in these uh, two, two studies. Um, it, again, I want to emphasize that the year is a data-driven or data-based or data-enabled uh, um, technique. Right? Um, so this is an um, article that's published in the International Journal of Production Research. Um, so uh, that's the title of the um, the paper uh, from data to big data in production research the past and the future of trends. Right? So, in, in when you look at the paper, um, you can see um, it's, uh, it's it is um, the DEA is mentioned, right? In manufacturing and DEA has been the most popular application area of data driven technology methodologies. Okay, so I just want to. Uh, point that out. So, um, I've mentioned the network DEA. I said this is the actual research frontier of the future um, of the DEA. There's a lot of a lot of researchers are working on that. Um, I would say a network DEA is a data enabled analytics. Okay, it's still DEA. It's just, it's just like uh, presented in a different way. Um, in particular, I think it's used for in uh, under the big data. Now here, I do not necessarily mention the the volume in terms of just large quantity of DMUs or the large quantity of inputs and outputs. I would, and here, I'm talking about a different dimension of the big data, which I will talk about um, later on um, in the next couple of slides. Right. So it's still, you know, DEA, data environment analysis, but I think we can also call it data enabled analytics. In there. What is big data, right? So you can Google it and you can get um, discussion or definition of what, what is big data. So I will not talk about that. However, there are certain dimensions in the big data, right? You have five Vs and nowadays you probably have Eight, ten, ten Vs, but let's focus on the um, the major, you know, the basic Vs. In that, the first one um, is the 
um, the volume, right? So again, that's a large amount of data, right? Um, so here I put down a recent um, paper or, or work that we published um, in uh, EJOR. Uh, it's got a data in web analysis and big data. So, and there we talk about how do you deal with a scenario have thousands, thousands of the DMUs? How do you, you know, calculate the, the efficiency scores quickly? Uh, because there is on the big data that there is an issue of a real time update. And right? so you have thousands, thousands of DMUs. What if you? I mean, let's say if you, you know, you, you, you take in the if you use the the um, traditional, um, you know, uh, the EMS storage, right? It probably takes you a day, you know, maybe two, um, to finish calculating all the, uh, just the, the, the efficiency scores for the DMUs, right? But if, what if you want a real-time update in a couple of hours? I mean, you know, how do you do that? So I think this technique is very useful to, for the real-time updating of the, the results. So this is the volume. So. It, it, you know, I, I think there are, you know, techniques can deal with the volume, even when we uh, talk, uh, before we talk about the, the big data. Uh, people are, the researchers are still uh, already working on developing, you know, uh, techniques for dealing with the, the situations when you have a set of big data in there. But I think this uh, technique is a little bit different, and I think it's very useful um, if you want to do uh, real-time uh, updating. And then uh, the other view is the variety, right? The variety. Um, to me, the variety means at least two things. One is that you have a set of uh, um, uh, different DMUs. Now, if you read some old, you know, old, uh, you know, papers on the ESA, you know, the ESA has to be homogeneous. I disagree. Okay. If you use the DEA as a benchmarking tool, I and mean, if you want to um, benchmark a set of companies, but in, but but the companies uh, they do you know you know uh, the, 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 for example the, the companies have different activities, but some family focus on a specific set of te technique, and then the other uh, set of companies specific in um, in a, a different set of techniques. And if you look at that paper. Um, that's published in EJOR at European Journal of Operational Research. We have examples in there just for the, the time sake. I'm not uh, going to details and give you an example. So when you have non-homogeneous DMUs, and if you wanted to do a benchmark study of these types of DMUs, you still can't do that, okay? So um, that's one um, area of the variety, you know, variety of DMUs. And of course, then you have a variety of performance measures, right? Um, so you have um, scale data, audio data, right? Uh, even you have, what if you have, uh, this kind of uh, also kind of, we kind of go, uh, you know, go into the area of the, the volume in there, too many inputs and outputs. We have techniques to reduce the number of DMUs, um, DS input and outputs. We have that. So we are, we have or we are developing tools for dealing with the variety of dimension of the uh, of the uh, the big data. Mm -hmm. Velocity, right? So this is the the speed. Um, how are we updating in there? So I was just mentioning that this article um, is a possibility. Uh, I, I think personally, I think it is a good tool, you know, to do that. Uh, but I, uh, we are currently doing some, I, I, in my view, uh, it's a conflict of interest for saying that because we are doing that. Some interesting um, uh, research um, uh, combine a, a, a DEA or network DEA uh, with a typical mach a data mining, uh, machine learning um, techniques. And we have some very um, interesting um, results, um, which um, uh, unfortunately is not ready to be shared at, at the moment. Um, uh, we are still doing more um, testing in, in, in there. And I think it's a, uh, it's a very interesting uh, line of research at, at least. And uh, hopefully that um, people viewing this um, uh, video are actually um, data science, you know, um, uh, researchers, and you may have a better knowledge than me in terms of all these uh, machine learning techniques. Right? So when you understand the basics of the DEA or, or the network DEA, which I will talk about soon, 
and, and hopefully some re, uh, re, new research ideas can come to you, right? For, for us, I'm, I'm a DEA researcher, so I know very well what is DEA, uh, but I don't know very well in terms of this machine learning techniques, the existing machine learning techniques. So I, I tend to develop a new line of research by combining DEA and machine learning from the perspective of DEA, because I know that well. that's my comfort, comfortable, you know, zone. So, but if you're coming from a different uh, research area and, you know, and then look, then when you look at the, uh, you may get some very, very different um, IQ. So I think this is a, this is a huge potential for, uh, for future, uh, future research under the uh, big data value. Um, that's the dimension I see uh, the network DEA can um, make a contribution into the uh, uh, big data, out of the big data. Um, when you look at, say, you know, sometimes the, the number of units, DMs and inputs and outputs has a limitation in that. You cannot have infinite number of bank branches for that, right? Um, so, so we, we look, when you look at the value aspect of the big data, um, I think you can get a very interesting, a very different aspect of the value, right? Uh, what, 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 what is value? What, what is value? When you have a big data, so you have lots of units, uh, lots of uh, different measures. Instead of uh, treating all the measures as the smaller, the better, the larger, the better, all the inputs and outputs, maybe you can put these measures into uh, or linking these measures in a network structure. What do I mean by that? Here, here's one example, right? Um, so this is one example I'm taking from um, uh, the, the airline. Okay, so you have the airline capacity, then you have the operation, you have the fleet size, then you have all the costs associated with it, and then you have all the revenue, uh, you know, uh, passenger miles associated with it. Again, in here, this is just an example. There's a lot of, lot, lot, lots of measures in there. You can probably can put them together. You can say, you know, you're going to look at AI performance. So, so the, but the question, what does the performance mean? I mean, you look at it, maybe you mean capacity in airline operations. If that's the case, should you separate them? Right. So this is what I call a network structure. Instead of putting them together, and you can see the free size actually linking um, the two uh, different aspects of the, uh, the airline uh, performance together. Right? Uh, so if the, it were production uh, situation that you have, a, you know, you go through a multi-stage production process. Right? And we have a paper published, you know, several years ago about uh, measuring the the performance of the supply chain, right? In supply chain, I mean, you can look at supply chain as a whole, but in supply chain, you have different members, right? So in each different members, you have links, you know, linking, you know, measures together, you link them together. So when you open up the DME as a black box, you look at the internal structures that you, you can extract additional information, which I call value, you know, from the, the, the analysis. Um, such information or value, you cannot get them by using the conventional DEA. You have to use the network DEA, okay? Um, so, you know, as you think about, I mean, you know, a simple description of network DEA is you look at the internal structure of a DMU. Uh, but on the other hand, when you look at supply chain or even like transportation logistic systems, when you evaluate uh, supply chains, you actually define uh, the measures that are related to the uh, supply chain component first, and then you sort of have the the entire uh, DMU of the supply chain system. Uh, so you are uh, you know, technically you're looking at the internal component of the supply chain if you define the, uh, the supply chain as a DMU, but you actually start off with the, the component uh, first. So it's really uh, about uh, the uh, the network. Uh, structure. Now let's um, um, take a look at this um, uh, this study. Um, this is uh, the study that will appear in um, the drawers 
uh, this is actually part of the uh, the special issue that I was talking about um, um, data science and uh, productivity. Um, so this is a study uh, about, so let's say you go from, when you, you are a driver, you go from point A to point B and you go through um, uh, you know, the different routes you can go. Um, let's say during the traffic hours, there's a, sometimes uh, part of the roads will have a, a traffic congestion. And some people use a GPS kind of to navigate through to try to avoid, you know, uh, the, the congested part. Um, but if you think about it, if everybody's, you know, um, is using the GPS system, then the, the congestion will just move, probably going to move from one part of the road to, um, to a different part if, you know, the GPS wants everybody to a specific road. So, so the, um, the research issue here um, is to look at in what portion of the uh, people that use the GPS that's what, what best for the uh, road congestion. So this is really a non, you know, production theory model. It's purely um, at the, you know, um, it, it's, a, it's tried to build a congestion index. So it's, it's really a purely a composite index, of course, by using uh, the DEA. Um, so you have uh, consider the signal, um, you know, uh, roads in there, the networks in there. Um, these are the, the measures that they, they use. Um, they build a network the uh, model, okay, so they have the inputs, uh, the, the measure goes into the first stage, and then they also have those intermediate measures, and then finally the, the outputs in kind of, so uh, really I think they define the inputs and outputs as, um, you know, the, the smaller the better, and the larger the better, and the outputs. Um, the intermediate measures, if you think about it, is the measures that link the two stages. So depending on how you define these measures and how um, the, each uh, stage you would like them to be, um, uh, it depends. So for example, in this case, I believe in the first stage when they're coming out, it's not kind of coming out, uh, you want to be the, the larger the better or when you come into the second stage, the smaller the better. It's still sort of like the output coming out and coming into uh, the second stage as the input. Um, however, um, you can also think about the, the linkage between the two stages as something you don't know whether the larger the better or the smaller the better. You want the two stages to uh, to decide you know, what's the best value. So if you think about supply chains, you know, two, two members of supply chains and some coordination trying to decide the measures link these two, uh, two stages in there. And this is the simulation. Uh, they did the, uh, the congestion index. As we can see, um, somewhere between 70% um, and 80%, um, you know, uh, the people that use a uh, GPS, they get a congestion index that's has the highest congestion um, index. So I, th I think this is a very interesting study. It's a very novel use of um, a network DEA to get values. Um, in, term, uh, to, in terms, in this case, the value would be you know uh, the congestion uh, uh, status. Here are some more examples of um, a network DEA. Uh, models or structures. We have this uh, parallel structure on the left and then the mixed, mixed uh, structure. You have a parallel structure, but you also have kind of a, a, a relationship in, in, in a series. Okay. And then um, uh, the other the type of uh, uh, network, the model is a dynamic structure. You have this uh, dynamic impact of, uh, from the time uh, that um, you look period that different periods over time. So this is a, this is a dynamic stru structure. So let's uh, take a look at uh, the mathematical models uh, very quickly um, on a general two-stage network. So uh, here I use the arrow, you know, you can kind of have the input come in, but it depends if it's not a, a production model, um, you, you don't have those uh, arrows in, in, in there. So in a sense, this, this picture gives you a sense that, so you have a linkage, which is on the Z, Okay, variables. I mean, it goes from one to two, but in reality, you may have something goes from two to one. It depends, and also from two, everything goes up, but it can have a feedback measure. It goes back to one, and we already have those um, studies published um, in, in the journals. 
Um, so this is a, sort of a general, uh, uh, a general uh, tool structure network. So all the axes and minus these are observations in there. So if you were to use the uh, the ratio to build a model, so this is your objective function, and then these are the, the weights in there. Um, one of the key um, thing here I would like to point out, if you pay attention to the weights here, this eta here. Um, um, so this is like the outputs and this is like the input, but it's the same area, it's the linkage in between the two states. The weights are, are set to be the same, okay, at least in this uh, particular uh, network um, modeling, uh, the network the modeling here. And these are the <coughs> just the regular uh, uh, ratios uh, in there. So this is the model. Um, unlike the standard year model, this model, uh, the alpha just the weights, you just specify the weights. You, know. uh, you can also uh, set this as a variable too, uh, but just will make this mo uh, uh, model more um, nonlinear. Nonlinear, more nonlinear. Um, as I was saying, unlike the uh, the, the conventional of the model, this cannot be uh, converted into uh, a, a linear model. No, you just can't. Okay. Um, so um, the other approach is, is just to build a PGS uh, production possibility set. Okay, you can do that. So that's the kind of the environment side. And from there, you can also uh, build a um, environment model. Okay. But here in the, um, in the multiplier model, the ratio model, you set the weights are the same for the link in here. Um, you kind of have this um, these equation in here to express the linkage between the two components of the two stages of the network. Um, what's interesting here um, is that the environmental model actually generates the overall integration of the machine resource. Okay, um, but where is the frontier? And it says, you know, where's the frontier from that environment model? Um, and no, model, no one has bothered to show where the frontier is. So this is, a, I think, a, a much needed research here in uh, network um, uh, DBA. So um, uh, some other type of research um, that you can do um, on the network DBA is the relationship between the multiplier and the environment network DBA. Okay, it's not like, it because it's nonlinear, there's no duality at all. Uh, where is the frontier? And scale efficiency, um, when you um, study a production system, if it's a network structural production system, you have a variable to scale, constant to scale, for example, so that where is the scale efficiency? And obviously, nonlinear optimization is very, very important uh, for network uh, DEA. So, um, this is a kind of brief story. Again, um, DEA uses in transportation and logistics. Um, uh, in the past 20 years, there are about 600 articles. Most of them are using conventional DEA, focusing on efficiency and productivity. Um, last five years, about uh, 180 papers, um, of which is 35, uh, they use a network DEA. So they started to use network DEA in transportation and logistics system. Um, it's kind of interesting if you think about it, you know, the transportation, you go from one point to another and another point in the system, it's, it's, it's a nature um, uh, a network structure. Uh, I think you, uh, we ought to use network DEA to uh, revisit some of the studies um, in there. Um, so this is a, a pie chart on the uh, uh, different, you know, uh, research field um, in uh, really to you know, transportation and logistic and supply chain um, kind of stuff. So the, the um, this is again the conventional DEA for big data. So as I mentioned, this is one of the recent articles that we published in EJOR. Uh, so two, um, the second one. So the, both dealing with the different aspects. So one is the, um, I believe the second paper is published. So the, by the time I was doing the slides, I think it's still in press, but I think it's published. Uh, one dealing with how you can uh, get the frontier, uh, the uh, identify the best practice DMEs quickly. And the second one is that if you have too many 
inputs and outputs, how do you go, how do you, you know, address that? Um, so finally, I um, would like to share with you um, this, um, um, Big Data and DEA. Uh, you know, big data has been around, the concept of the big data has been around for several years. And I'm just, I'm just you know, interested to see if, uh, to see if anybody actually mentioned big data in their um, DEA uh, studies. So um, this is the, uh, so we did a web of science search, okay. Um, and uh, we get about, you know, 40 or 38 um, studies. Um, we'll have to delete those um, duplicates sometimes. And, this paper was counted you know, several times. Um, a, a significant number of studies are carried out for environmental uh, issues under the context of big data. So again, this is the, um, the JORS uh, special issue I was talking about earlier, um, and it's big data for better productivity. Um, so we basically in this, um, uh, special issue we're looking for uh, papers, not necessarily, you know, uh, pure DEA papers. Uh, but I think we ended up with several uh, accept the paper that I, I used the year with SMS DART. So um, this uh, special issue is almost done, and uh, most of the accept the papers, I believe you can find them uh, already online. Uh, on the on a journal website. So I highly recommend you to um, take a look at uh, the, the papers in this, uh, this issue. Um, so I would like to um, just say, um, um, this is the uh, actually part of the um, Data Environment International Conferences that uh, I'm organizing. Uh, for you know, past uh, three, four years. Um, we think that um, data envelop analysis and, and other big data is really a data enabled analytics. Um, this is the um, new uh, direction that we want to go um, under uh, the, uh, the big data. Um, and if you think about it, you have to, again, I would say at the very beginning, you have to have data in order to be able to, be able to use uh, uh, DEA. So really we are, you know, about 40 years ago, we have DEA, you know, now we have DEA square. You know, um, this is the uh, really an exciting uh, movement and, um, and, our, uh, and a good opportunity for all of us to uh, make some contributions, some new and significant contributions by using uh, DEA uh, on the big data. And um, finally, uh, um, we are, uh, Professor Vincent Charles and I, we are editing a, a book for uh, Spinger, uh, the International Series in Operational Research and the Management Science. Um, it's called Data Enabled Analytics DEA for Big Data. And we welcome submissions. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me or uh, Professor Vincent uh, uh, Charles. And with this uh, concludes the uh, my uh, talk. Um, if you have any questions, comments, and suggestions, uh, please, uh, please feel free to um, to let me know. Also, uh, this is the uh, the website. Um, you can look at uh, my new um, explanation, um, new um, view of DEA.